Some people criticise these spacecraft and they say, you know, the, the web, let's say the James Webb Space Telescope, it was, what, $6 billion or so. But it's appropriate to point out that nobody put $6 billion in a suitcase and launched it on the rockets. The $6 billion didn't go into space. It was spent on Earth. And what is often the case, so putting aside the glory and wonder of the discoveries that are made, you are paying people to do high-tech jobs and do research and build machines that operate at the, the, the edge of the possible. And history tells us that that tends to be extremely useful. 50 million years after the Earth formed, there was another planet very close to the Earth, about the size of Mars. The theory goes that this planet hit the Earth so you hit the Earth in a glancing blow. You knock off loads of bits, but not the center of the Earth. Now when planets form, the heavy things drift towards the center of the planet. And that's why all the iron, or most of the iron in the Earth, sits at its core. And so when this collision happened, the bits that got knocked off were not very rich in iron because all the iron was sat in the middle of the Earth. There's a theory which is pretty widely accepted because the moon is indeed made of the same stuff as the Earth, but there's very little iron in it. Life is just chemistry. If you look at the history of life on Earth, almost as soon as it cooled down, we see evidence of life. So somewhere along the line, active geochemistry became biochemistry on Earth. And we know that the conditions that led to the origin of life on Earth were present on Mars four billion years ago. And we know that they're present on Europa today. There must be, even in the solar system, I would not be surprised if we find microbes on Mars or on some of the moons of Jupiter or Saturn where there's liquid water. Let's imagine that in, in our galaxy, there's just us that thinks and can feel and in a very real sense bring meaning to the universe. All these things we've talked about, the beauty of these galaxies, they're not beautiful if there's nothing there to perceive them, right? They're just galaxies. If we destroy ourselves deliberately or through inaction, then it's possible that we eliminate meaning perhaps forever in a galaxy of 400 billion stars. We have a tremendous responsibility in a sense, not to do that.